This is a Proforto Acute D4 head. They're pretty common. Um, Proforto Acute heads, they make a couple of different varieties. It can be confusing. Uh, they make uh, Proforto Acute. I think they make one called an Acute 2. This is uh, called the Acute D4. So uh, these are, the D4s are kind of common. And uh, if you're new to working with Pro Photo packs, uh, these older ones, you may be also thinking, what kind of head do I want to get? And uh, some are a little bit more expensive than others. So the D4 works with the Acute Pack and the D4 Pack. If you um, have a D4 Pack, I highly doubt you're watching this video because those things are expensive. And um, you're going to know more about how the heads work than probably I do. But if you are thinking about buying a used acute pack, then you might see these and wonder, sh you know, what is it and why should I get it? So uh, the D4 means that uh, it works with both packs and it also goes to 4,800 watts. So if you're working with a 1,200 watt pack, you don't necessarily need the D4. I think the acute or the acute two those two go to like 1200 or 2400 watts it's a little bit hard to find the wattage for those uh, but anyways with this head you can use it on any kind of acute pack that you're going to pick up you don't have to worry about getting a head that isn't rated to the watts of your pack um, the uh, Otherwise, they all, all of these acute heads work the same way. They have the same kind of physical features. And I'm, I've talked about that in another video, but uh, I'm going to kind of go over it again here. And uh, in no particular order, but, uh, you know, one thing that I like is the frosted dome at the front. You can take that off. And for me, what that means is it simply protects the flash tube and uh, modeling light. If, you know, if you have a modeling light installed, uh, from getting damaged when you put the modifiers on or off. So that would be like a reflector or a soft box. And uh, you can see those two little uh, uh, metal wires hanging down. Those are tension wires. They actually hold the frosted dome on. They do a, they do a great job. Uh, this These heads are a cylinder. This is a back view. Uh, you can see it's, it's round and what that means is it's really, really easy to put on modifiers. And uh, here, here are common modifiers that sometimes you'll find sold with the head. These are uh, called uh, reflectors. They're zoom reflectors. And what that means, and this is kind of a cool feature in my opinion, uh, is this can spread the light at, uh, at its narrowest beam is 45 degrees and at its widest is about 105 degrees. And uh, so, you know, if you have it a really, really wide beam, let's say at 105 degrees, you're kind of shoving the uh, reflector all the way to the back of the head. And you, you, if you'll notice, there are some numbers, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And uh, if you set the reflector at 4, it's going to be the narrow beam. If you shove it all the way back to 10, it's going to be the wide beam. So that's what the numbers are. So here you can see it's set to 10. And here you can see it's set to 4. So this would be 45 degrees. This would be uh, like 105 degrees. And so why does that matter and would you ever use it? Well, I don't know, but um, I use it two ways. One is when I have an umbrella and, and umbrellas actually fit through the reflector into the flash head. Uh, they're, they stay quite secure. I've used the you know big six foot umbrellas uh, and I feel very confident with those on one of these heads. Um, if you want to fill that six foot umbrella, you may want to have the beam wider. And so you can do that simply by adjusting the reflector to, you know, to make it a wider beam of light to fill the entire you know, umbrella if that's what you're after. If you want to concentrate the light into the center of the umbrella and try to make a narrower, let's say, beam of light coming out, then, you know, you can push it to the other end 
and uh, you're going to get 45 degrees and, and more of a concentrated spot in the umbrella. It doesn't really, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like a parabolic umbrella from what I've read where you can do some fine focusing, but it's along those ideas. And the other way I use these with in this configuration is through diffusion material. So, uh, you know, there's a couple that I like to use. One is uh, called Savage Translum. It's a plastic material. It comes on a roll. Another is uh, called Grid Cloth, and that comes on a roll, too. Grid Cloth is about five feet wide, and it's as long as you buy it. You buy it by the yard. So in a uh, narrow beam, it's going to be concentrated in the center of that Grid Cloth. If I make it wide, then it's going to kind of evenly light the entire five feet. Um, so I like that feature. Sometimes I can't always move my light stand further away from the grid cloth in order to properly fill it the way I want it. Uh, and by using the zoom reflector, I, I can do that. And uh, I should also say that, uh, you know, you lose a little bit of output the more you make the light wide. So uh, in this configuration, let's just say I can get an output of f8, and uh, just making that number up. If I have it in this configuration where I'm uh, spreading it at 105 degrees, maybe I'm getting an output of, you know, f5.6. So almost a stop of light difference by, uh, by simply moving the zoom flector reflector in or out. I mean, the reflectors... Um, do a lot to uh, uh, either decrease or increase the power of your strobes. And, you know, Profoto, if you look inside of one of their reflectors, they are dimpled. There's all sorts of like little micro, you know, reflective surfaces. Uh, there's a fair amount of thought that went into trying to make them efficient. And, and you'd expect that it's, it's a professional tool. The, um, other features that I like about this are, and this is a big one for me, and they're on all of the uh, Profoto Acute heads, and that is the way that you can adjust the light up or down or left or right. So uh, there is actually a what is like a baby pin that attaches to the top of your light stand. And what do I mean by that? Well, the the light stand has a baby pin. The, all of these flash heads, it doesn't matter what brand, uh, but, you know, Profoto is the same. There, there's, it, it's called like a baby receiver is, is the part that you put over the baby pen on the light stand. So that's standard. You know, there's a little knob where you can tighten it down. And by the way, when you tighten these things down, they stay put. Um, so you can even put it on a grip arm, and it's probably not going to sag that much when it's on the grip arm. Uh, even if you have the grip arm, say, parallel to the ground. So that's that's something you have to try. It's just, it defies logic, because a lot of times the lights are going to sag when you do that. But when you look uh, at the handle here and to the left of the handle, you actually have uh, another baby pin, and it's kind of like a little version of a grip head. So there's two pucks that come together, and they s they tightly, tightly, tightly stay uh, on that pin. And if you loosen it, you can move this head to the left or to the right. In fact, you can spin it 360 degrees uh, without having to uh, uh, loosen the collar uh, at the bottom, that knob at the bottom. And you can tilt it up or tilt it down. So why is that nice? Well, you can, uh, by using the large handle, you can easily, easily, easily adjust the head. And once you tighten it down, it stays in place. I've used really large modifiers. Uh, I think something like four feet by six feet. I mean, they're, they're big, they're kind of heavy. And uh, these heads will stay in that spot. You know, I'm more worried about how secure my light stand is than any kind of creep that's going to be coming from the, uh, the, the adjustments of the locking the head down. So 
big, big feature for me is uh, the way that you can manipulate the head and adjust it and the fact that it'll stay in place. While we're taking a look at the back here, there's uh, one other thing in the, in the upper left-hand corner is a modeling lamp button or dial. So you can turn the modeling lamp on or off. There's a built-in fan. Uh, with the modeling lamp, you have to turn it on the pack as well, but uh, you can turn it on the pack and turn the power all the way down uh, through this dial on the back of the head, and what that'll do is it'll leave the fan on but not turn on the modeling light. So the fan, it's a nice feature. If you're using a softbox, uh, you may want to have the fan on. If you're using a modeling light in a softbox, you most definitely are going to want to have the fan on. Uh, and in fact, it comes on if you have the modeling light on. So I like that. The uh, cord that comes out of here, the extension cord, this is what you're going to use to uh, plug the, the, the strobe into the pack. Uh, you know, the, the plug itself is robust. Um, you can see the pins there. Here's a side shot. It's made out of really tough, I don't know what it is, sort of composite plastic. I mean, you could step on it. I probably wouldn't recommend that, but it's, it's, it's meant for a rental house. It's meant for a fair amount of abuse, as is the rest of the head. Um, and these are old. They're over 10 years old. Uh, and they stand up. They, they're overbuilt. Uh, and that's a great feature if you're picking them up used because they still have a lot of life in them. Uh, and uh, in conjunction with the plug is the actual cord, the extension cord. So it is made out of uh, very thick and very robust. It's almost like a rubber material. It is easy to coil it, and you can coil it in such a way that the wires don't get twisted or bent. Uh, so what that means is when you go to put the light away, if you put it in a case, it's easy and quick to get it kind of coiled and ready to go uh, when it's not on a light stand. So that, that suppleness, if you will, of the cable is, is quite nice. Uh, and yeah, that is uh, kind of a quick tour of one of these. Um, I think if you're thinking of getting a pack and heads as opposed to a monoblock, uh, a lot of times people are going to say, well, you have the head, you have the pack, it's more weight, you have a cord going into the wall. These acute packs are not battery powered. You have a cord going up to the lamp, so you have extra cords to kind of trip on. And that's all true. Um, but the, the head itself is l weighs less than a monoblock would. So if you have it above your, you know, if you have it high on a light stand, that's a good thing. You have less weight at the top of a light stand. And if one of these heads breaks, and uh, I suppose they do, uh, they're, but the, what I'm trying to tell you is they're quite robust, uh, that's great. You just go out and get another one. I mean, you can buy one of these heads for, in the United States, probably between $150 and $200 um, if you, you know, go to one of the online places to buy things. So they're not that expensive, um, and your pack can take up to three of them, uh, at least the acute pack can. So those are just my thoughts. Um, I'm a fan uh, of them. I like them. I like the features, and I like the build quality.